questions? Thank you very much, Senator Wyden. Uh, Senator Braun. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I've been here a little over three years, <coughs> and I recall the first budget uh, hearing that I was at. Uh, Senator Mike Enzi was the chair then. And when you keep hearing the same thing over and over again, it gets tired to listen. I agree that there are certain priorities we have as a government. I'd say defending our country would be up to <coughs> Attending to our infrastructure, which we all share, and entitlements. Uh, I think it's hard to make the argument that we do not need to keep this whole and healthy. But I also recall from that discussion that nothing ever gets done because there's no political will here to do it. On decisions like this, where you're dealing with a situation a lot more complicated now than it was even three and a half years ago, we were $18 trillion in debt <coughs> when I got here. We're 30, and imagine we got a blueprint out there that says we're going to be 45 trillion in debt in 10 years. That's not the context that any of this is going to work within other than an academic discussion. That lack of political will of trading off spending for this versus that which you've got to do everywhere else in our society. It's laughed at when you would ever use the metaphor of households. Let's use the metaphor of state and local governments. They have guardrails that force political will into doing what needs to be done. All I can tell you is we're not evolving into a place to where we're going to be able to do any of this, and it's going to go way beyond Social Security. Medicare trust fund goes broke in a little over four years. Senator Sanders and I are probably the two that talk about health care the most. Different points of view on what to do. It's a broken system. If we fixed health care alone, made it more transparent, made it more competitive, took it down to where it is across the rest of the world, which is closer to 11, 12, 13 percent of our GDP, We'd all of a sudden free up 5 to 6% of our GDP that you could then plow into whatever you want to prioritize. But as long as we don't do budgets, which we haven't done in 10 years, as long as we come up with gimmicks that we soon overturn, it doesn't look good for fixing what we're all here to talk about. When we're borrowing money, from our kids and our grandkids, which is what we're doing now to run this biggest business in the world, you're not going to be in a position to fix maybe one of the most important things it does. I don't think we're going to get to the discussion of cutting benefits. I don't think that's probably the right place to be. I think it's how do you fix the system in general so you can keep at least what's there intact. And then, once you fix the problem overall, have the political will to zero in on what's most important. And we could do it. Senator Wyman's proposal, that may or may not flesh out some type of Band-Aid approach to it. What I'm talking about, fix health care. You free up the biggest part of our GDP it acknowledges that regardless of the tax rates, look at this data, we generate 175 to 18% of our GDP in federal revenues. We got to look at the reality of what we can take in each year. If we don't, we're just ignoring the st statistics. So I'm going to put a budget actually out on the floor so that Americans at least have something to look at. And that's going to happen in two to three weeks. It's going to be sensible. It's going to balance. It's going to acknowledge that for all the wonderful things we want to do here, most of them not hitting the target, 
we're discussing here how we want to add more benefits. Well, maybe that's what needs to be done, but you certainly aren't going to be able to do it and count on it unless we fix the underlying issues. We've got to get back to budgets. We've got to do it through regular order. And we've got to acknowledge that the modern monetary theory, which means deficits and debt don't matter anymore, that's not a business plan. That'll take us into Chapter 11 someday, and even this place is not immune to that. And that budget that was put out there, we're going to be far deeper in the hole than $45 trillion when you've underestimated inflation and the cost of interest. I put it out there because this is a valid discussion. The elderly that work their entire life thinking that their retirement and their health care is going to be there, that's in peril. And that's all due to us. It's due to how the system has evolved to this point, the fact we have no political will, and yes, we do have to make trade-offs. And until we can get the budget balanced, we're never going to be able to say with honesty and certainty that we can do anything to help Social Security in the long run. My two cents. Uh, thank you, Senator Brun. If I might make a, a correction to what you said, you thought that the we spend 17 to 18 percent of our GDP on health care. Wrong. It's close to 20. No, I said those are federal revenues, regardless of our tax rate. Oh, I'm sorry, but yeah, in fact, we are spending a fortune on health care. You're right. We spend twice as much per capita as any other country. We do, and if okay. we take that down, no. And when it comes to Healthcare, that's the biggest sector of our economy. Right. And it's close to 20 percent of our GDP. And right no, you're, you are right. It's approaching 20. It's 17 to 18 recently. It's 12 to 13 in most other countries. That's right. And that's where you get that 6 to 7 percent savings. That's the only real place that we can grab real funds. And yes, I actually understated that a little bit. And I was also talking about the federal revenues that we have to work with. It's in that same range. We've got to be realistic there as well. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Senator Van Hollen.